In this section, I will demonstrate techniques for extending access to native device APIs. Specifically, we will cover how to create native plugins for the Android and iOS platforms. Let's get started. In this video, we will explore how to create native plugins for the Android platform. The first question we need to answer when talking about native plugins in Ionic 4 is why do we need them in the first place? When we look at this diagram to the right hand side of your screen, it shows the architecture of an Ionic 4 app. We can see that our Ionic 4 code compiles down to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which runs inside a web view. This web view cannot directly access the native operating system's APIs. In order to access the native APIs, we need a so-called bridge, such as Capacitor or Cordova. The native bridge then grants us access to the native APIs through specific plugins for specific APIs, such as for the gyroscope, the contacts, camera, etc. Ionic has a set of core plugins that is maintained by the Ionic team, as well as a bigger collection of community supported plugins. You can find out more about the available plugins by visiting the link on your screen. In many cases, however, you will find that there is no plugin that fits the specific use case for the app that you are developing. It is in such cases where we need to create our own custom plugins. So in this tutorial, I will demonstrate with a basic example how to do just that. On your screen, you can see the basic structure of a capacitor plugin for the Android platform. Let's go through each part one by one. At the top, we have our plugin package name, and we import the various classes from capacitor that we use to create the custom plugin. Next, we have the native plugin decorator, which is placed right before our custom plugin class. So at the core, a capacitor plugin is a Java class that extends the base plugin class provided by capacitor. And within our class, we have the various methods that implement the functionality of our plugin. These plugin methods are decorated with the plugin method decorator. And all plugin methods have a parameter called call, which is of the type plugin call. This is used to pass in data from Ionic to our native code and back from the native code to Ionic. Let's see this in action. I am in the terminal inside the folder for our project. So the first thing that you want to do is to ensure that you have the dependencies of the project installed. We do that by running the command npm install. This is going to go ahead and download and install all the dependencies for the project, most important of which is capacitor. Okay, so our dependencies have been successfully installed. Let's clear our screen and open the project in Visual Studio Code. Here we have our project open in Visual Studio Code. Let's go to source, home, and let's open home.page.html and home.page.ts. Let's close the panel for more space. And let's start in the template file. So here on our home page, we have some sample code. And what we want to pay attention to is the ion button right here. And this result right here. So in our ionic button, if we click it, we're going to run 
this method called run plugin. And here we are interpolating a variable called result. So the value of result is going to be displayed in our view. Let's go to home.page.ts. And here, if we scroll down, we have the variable result, and we have another variable for the plugin output. Here is our run plugin function, which is asynchronous. So essentially what we're doing is we are running our demo plugin and running a method called run native code. And to that method, we are passing in an object with the key value pair name, which is equal to code swag. And then we are assigning to this dot result, the result property of the plugin output. If we scroll back up, you can see here on line two, we are importing the plugins class from capacitor core, and we're creating a constant that's going to contain our demo plugin. So what happens is all the plugins that we register with capacitor are put into this class, and we can then fetch the specific plugin that we want. And down here, we're making use of that plugin. So that's it for the Ionic side of our code. Let's go to the native side. Let's go back to our terminal. So back in our terminal, let's clear the screen. And now what we want to do is to open our application using Android Studio. What Capacitor does is it generates our Android Studio project from prepared Ionic files. So in order to prepare and compile or transpile our Ionic files, we need to run the command Ionic build. This will create the necessary www folder containing all of our assets. The Ionic build process is complete. Let's clear our screen. Next, we need to add the Android platform to our capacitor project. We do that by issuing the command npx cap add Android. All right, the Android project has been successfully added. Next, we need to run npx cap open Android to launch Android Studio. So our project is open in Android Studio. Let's open the necessary code files. So we want to go to app and Java. And we want to go here to our demo plugin. And we have the main activity file right here. So let's open main activity. Let's create more space for our code window. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a class for our plugin. To do that, we want to right click over here on our package name and we want to select new and a new Java class. So we're going to call this demo plugin and click OK. And this generates a file for our demo plugin. So now we want to paste some code from the code bundle. All right, and that is the code for our plugin. So first we have our package name on line number one, and then from line number three to line number six, we have various imports of classes that we're going to use in creating our plugin. 
and these are imported from com.getCapacitor. So from line three all the way until line eight, we are importing various classes from Capacitor that we will use in creating our plugin. If we scroll a little bit further down, we see we have this native plugin decorator that lets our compiler know that this class is a plugin. And of course, we have the demo plugin class name, which is a subclass of the plugin parent class. Then we have our plugin method and the decorator, as you can see right there. And there is our method. So our method is called run native code. And that is the method that we are calling from our Ionic code. So our method is very simple. We are creating a string variable called name and to it, we are passing in the value of a property called name that has been passed on from Ionic. And then here we are creating a JavaScript object called output. And then we are creating a key value pair inside the output JavaScript object. So we have a key called result. And in the value of result, we are simply saying hello to whatever name has been passed in. If you remember from our code, actually, let me go to the Ionic code right now. So in our Ionic code, we are passing in a name of code swag. So because we passed in code swag, it's going to say, hello, code swag. Finally, we call the method call.resolve and we pass into it our output object. So this has the effect of passing in data from our native code back to Ionic. And then finally, we need to register our plugin so that Capacitor recognizes it. To do that, we go to mainactivity.java and inside mainactivity.java, we want to import the class for our plugin. So we'll say import and then our package name. And you can see autocomplete will assist us. So it's uk.co.codeswag.demo plugin and our class name demo plugin. Let's not forget a semicolon. And if we scroll down a little bit, inside the this.init method, we want to simply type in this line, add and the name of our plugin class, which is demo plugin dot class and a semicolon. And that's it. Once we've done this, our plugin will be recognized by capacitor. So that's all that we need to do in creating this very simple demonstration plugin. Let's launch our application in the Android emulator and see it in action. So our application has loaded in the Android emulator. And if I scroll down, you can see our button for running our native code. And here the result is empty. So let's click the button and run the native code through our plugin. And as you can see, it says hello code swag, which is what we expect. So this is how you can create a custom plugin for Capacitor. Of course, this is a very simple example, but it's quite powerful because what it allows you to do is you can write any arbitrary native code and run it through Ionic. This is a very powerful feature of Ionic because it means that you can take advantage of the wealth of resources on the internet of performing various activities or various tasks using native code. So all that information on how to perform various tasks using native code on the internet, 
are now at your disposal through these capacitor plugins.